<laughs> you had one, haven't you? Uh, who me? No. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Let me. Uh, how do you change your name? I swear I did it the other day. You have to r- you right click on your picture. Oh. And then rename is one of the options. It's actually a fairly lengthy legal That's process, right. from what I hear. That's right. That's I right. had to change it because my my D and D name was on there. Yeah, One hundred and fifty bucks funny. down at the courthouse. You can change it to whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got my work zoom and i try to keep that stuff separate because otherwise all your information gets funneled into a um a crm so i have to use my wife yeah. for this stuff should legally change my name to eric emerald <laughs> you already have that would be that's what you should name your kid by the way eric emerald yeah. but i was gonna say you already have like a a super villain name or like yeah. that. Derek diamond is a is a bond villain that's a new one i haven't heard that i like it though like, do you have a white cat you could just sit there and pet while we talk? <laughs> Unfortunately, no. Um, you guys, by the way, I've been going through all the old NCR episodes as I've been driving at work a lot. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I, I made it all the way back to Double Dragon. Oh, yeah. How that, far back was yeah. that? Last year. Okay. I think. I wasn't really looking at the dates, but it was a lot. It was a it is, I had to scroll a long time to get there. So okay. Um, you guys universally hated that movie, and I have never yeah, seen it. It's awful. <laughs> I almost want to watch it just so you get um, you know. But it, it was one of the more more fun commentary tracks. Yeah, we did it was of how bad it was. It was. You guys should do um, Six Train Samurai. It's a bad movie that's good. Okay. Google it if you've never heard of it. It's it's oh, yeah. it's from the nineties. All right, well, I've got all my levels good. Um, so you guys know the the format of the show. We're going to do it a little bit different tonight. we got a couple of news stories I want to I wanna go through. Um, just because, you know, there's some good stories that we got to get to. And then uh, we'll just talk about KOTOR after that. You guys, uh, you guys ready to do this thing? Sure. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. I'm going to try to eat my pizza off screen. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. Well, here we go. And three, two. Oh, and you know, there's. Uh, I'm gonna play the music, but you guys probably, you guys are not gonna hear it. Yeah, so you won't. Yeah, you won't be able to hear it. I, I've know. gotten used to that with mine. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Here we go. Three, two, one. programs we're back for another episode of the nerd cave retro show my name is jason robbins my name is derek diamond and we have some guests here on a very special spectacular fantastic episode of the nerd cave retro joining us from one of our longtime sponsors here at the nerd cave retro show he's 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 something else he goes by (laughs) jester and he has a show called the jester's court which i was on not too long ago to talk about halloween 3 so if you haven't heard that you're missing out go check out the jester's court podcast and youtube show joining us from it's mr b res coffee himself mr mike eveland how are you doing sir i'm good how are you guys doing good fantastic and joining us also from the fantastic people podcast you he, you've never been on this show, but we I haven't. We both, me and Derek, both have been on the Fantastic People podcast. You have, but uh, your co-host suggested that you should be on this episode because you're almost as big a Star Wars fan as I am. I think. I I think so. I think so. I, close. We have Mr. Reagan Bell from the Fantastic People podcast. Welcome, sir. Hello. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. So uh, it's good to have you guys here tonight, and uh, we're going to do a little bit different format. Um, we usually start out by talking about our week, so uh, we'll just kind of go around the table and, and talk about what we've been playing or what we've been watching, but we usually start, I, I like to start with Derek. So Derek, how has your week been, my friend? It's been good. I've been on a little bit of a social media hiatus leading <laughs> up to the new Spider-Man movie because what, I don't want to be spoiled. What movie? 
What? What? Well, what is... in case you didn't know, there's a new Spider-Man movie coming out later Sp- this week. Spi- so. Spoder? Spoder Moon? Who? Shh. What? Spodermon? Spodermon? Something what like are you that? talking? Yeah, I've never heard of it. He it must... he can't find he can't find his way home. Must be That's Korean. the story of the movie. So yeah, yeah, I think <laughs> I think so. I think so. Dubbed or subtitled? Uh, you get the option. Good, 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 good. Yeah, <laughs> o- options are key in today's movie going world. But no, I've been. Uh, it's actually been kind of liberating and therapeutic in a way to just be away from social media for a couple of days. So. Been uh, been watching a lot of shows, uh, catching up on some movies, and uh, playing some Knights of the Old Republic over the last couple of days to kind of get prepped for this show. And man, it has been a long time since I played that game, but it was fun to dive back into it. But we'll we'll get to that a little bit later on. Oh, yeah. But other than that, my week's been pretty good. Uh, what about you, Mister Evelyn? How has your week been? Been playing anything interesting? I have sadly not had time to play anything, including this game for this episode <laughs> or anything for my show. So, um, no, I've been writing. Um, still doing my 50 plus hour work week at the soon to be old job. So, mm, that sounds lovely. <laughs> and in general, just trying to raise my noobness level of audio control on podcasts slash YouTube so that, you know, it sounds like someone knows what they're doing. It takes a little while, but once you get the hang of it, it, it's like, you know, don't even have to think about it. Once you get your levels right, you're just like, I'm never touching anything ever again. (laughs) (laughs) So what about you, Reagan? How's your week been? I saw that you you cranked up some KOTOR earlier today. I I did, and funny enough, and maybe we'll get into this, but I had my Xbox One that I was playing it on, Mm -hmm. and then next to it was my original xbox and i was like this is stupid why am i not playing this on the original xbox um but yeah i've been you know i've been it's been good it's been a good week um also have been dabbling in some diablo 3 uh as of late uh speaking of spider-man i finished up uh, a couple weeks ago finished up um the spider-man playstation game so nice uh, all all, like 100 completion which took a really long uh very uh very repetitive process but it's funny you it. say that like this I, i've been i was playing kotor a lot i mean not a whole lot you know as much as i could but spider-man for some reason on the ps4 took my attention away like a week and a half ago mm-hmm. and i just i just randomly just stuck it in and started playing it again yeah and picked up my game i'd already finished the game but i was at like I think 74% complete oh, or something like that. And I'm like, I want a hundred percent this thing. Yep. So I just started going yeah. around the city trying to, you know, like <clears throat> get all the, everything you can do in the all game. The crime. Yeah. Yeah. All the crime stuff. So it just kind of sucked me back in. I don't know what it is about that game. Yeah. It's just it's one of the most perfect superhero games yeah. ever made. Yeah. That's beautiful. the best Spider-Man yeah. since the 361. Like like the, the PS4 exclusive, I assume is what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that is such a good Spider-Man game. I can yeah. do a round table discussion just on that game. Absolutely. It's a beautiful one, game. One of the most fun parts of the game is actually just getting all the suits. Just getting mm-hmm. the suits yeah. is 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 it's sort of like the way the character creator in City of Heroes used to be for me. It's like I just yeah. I, all I want to do is just cycle through suits. Yep. and get yep. as many as I can. Yep. But uh, but yeah, um, that's just, like I said, that's that's pretty much what I've been playing this last week is the Spider Man, and uh, that's about it. I really haven't touched Kotor. I played a little bit of Kotor this last weekend, but maybe like an hour, not that much. But um, but yeah, we'll get into that in just a little bit. Um, before we do that, uh, I do have a couple of news stories I wanted to get to. So you guys want to do a couple of news bits tonight? Let's hear it. Let's sure. do it. If my thing will play. There we go. Tonight's story, well, one of the stories was submitted to us by Mr. Tyler Watson. Um, and if you have a story you'd like to for us to cover, please send it to nerdcaveretro at gmail. Dot com. Uh, I would be remiss if we didn't cover this on a Nintendo-centric uh, podcast that we do here uh, from NintendoLife.com. Uh, go, yes, I want to continue blocking ads. Masayuki Yamura, the creator of the NES and SNES, has passed away. Um, the Famicom 
Uh, let's see, he passed away on December 6th at the age of 78. The Famicom, the system that would become the NES in the West, was the brainchild of Yamura, who joined Nintendo as an engineer from Sharp in 1972 at a time when it was tentatively exploring the possibilities of electronic entertainment. One of his first roles was to help with the Nintendo's range of location-based light gun games. When Nintendo R uh, Research and Development 2 was created, Yamura was placed in charge and he was instrumental in the development of the Nintendo's color TV game systems, the company's first tentative foray into the domestic video games. Uh, and, uh, and of course it goes on, he was uh, basically the designer creator of the NES and the SNES. So thanks to this man who I, I'm sad to say I didn't really know who he was until you know he passed mm -hmm. away, which is kind of sad for being such a Nintendo fan. But uh, many, many countless hours of joy, not even hours, probably years of joy created by this man. And uh, he will definitely sorely be missed in the gaming world. Yeah, and what a legacy he leaves mm -hmm. behind. You think of how important those two systems are you know, in the decades of the 80s and 90s and to have yep. you, to, to acknowledge the one who essentially designed them you know he was in a way an integral part of our childhood mm -hmm. without us really knowing it so it's it is sad but he's left a legacy that will be around long after the four of us are gone check this out the the combined sales of the famicom and its western counterpart the nes Total 61.91 million units. 20 million of wow. those were in Japan alone. He wow. made a lot of money for Nintendo. If it wasn't for him, we mm -hmm. would not have the video game industry basically as we know it right now when you really think about it. Mm -hmm. And we would all be more productive people. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's at the bottom of this article, there's actually a really cool post uh, through Twitter. It's a side-by-side -side photo of him, you know, designing or with a finished Famicom and then a more up-to-date picture of him playing a Famicom. It, it's yeah. really cool to see. Mm. But, yeah, amazing legacy. Yeah, I don't, that's one of those things that I'm sorry. And I hate that, you know, he didn't really get any recognition until he died. But mm. man, like you said, that is a legacy that's going to live on for a long, long time. Because Nintendo's not going anywhere. I mean, just because of the, you know, the original Nintendo and the Wii sales alone ha are going to keep Nintendo afloat for. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have a war. I can't even remember the 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 amount that was was said, but N Nintendo has a war chest of like sixty billion dollars or something like that. So they could fail like their next ten consoles and still have money. Well, and that makes I, sense too because they don't come out. I mean, maybe I'm, it seems like a feeling, but it doesn't seem like they rush to get consoles out either. They're so much slower and cal calculated yeah. with what they release. Well, that's what what I really like about Nintendo is they don't really care about. I mean, and this was of course around the time of uh i guess the especially the wii era because you know they mm -hmm. basically it was basically just a a souped up uh gamecube they don't really care about um you know the specs and things like that mm -hmm. i mean they're always like their hardware is always like a generation behind but it's that nintendo has like something i can't even remember how many uh, ips it is but they have like 30 active ips right now but they have you know, over a hundred IPs that are just, I mean, they could just live off of the Nintendo properties alone. They don't even need third party, uh, third party publishers for for their stuff to stay relevant. Because mm -hmm. you think about it, I for mean, sure. look at Sony and Microsoft. Like Microsoft has, you know, their franchises like uh, Gears of War, uh, Halo. And you could probably count on like one hand, you know, how many of each of those have like an IP that you associate with that console. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, PlayStation has uh, the Metal Gear games, things like that. But when it comes to Nintendo, I mean, you just rattle them off. I mean, you got Mario, Metroid, 
Legend of Zelda, you know, Kirby, uh, Smash Brothers. Like, uh, oh my, like, you just, you would sit here for an hour listing off all the stuff that Nintendo has. I really wanted you to keep going because yeah. you said you could rattle them off. It's like, come on, keep going, keep oh, going. Well, there's like <laughs> Kid Icarus. Like, just think about all the ones they don't even use, like Kid Icarus and Star yeah. Tropics and like all that mm -hmm. stuff. Like, if they, they could just keep, if, I would be so happy if they brought out a new Star Tropics game. Like, come on, Nintendo, just for me. me I've been here for 35 years now, by your side, singing your praises. Just make it for me. Just make yeah. that game for me, and I'll be happy. One copy. Yeah, th that's One how copy. you know Nintendo knows they have the money, because they don't really care what you ask for. Yeah. And not just you specifically, <laughs> but in general. Exactly. Yeah. How about, like, how about a you're going to like this release, and you're going to buy it. I don't care what's on it. You don't care what's on it. Get it. How about we'll a new, buy it. new paper boy? Anybody? Anybody new paper boy? I would play a new uh, paper boy. I'm down. <laughs> I would play that. <laughs> I couldn't tell you the last time I thought about paper boy. Oh, man. So many hours of that game at my grandmother's house. This and is great. Nintendo is, and it, this is our fault that this is, is the way it is, but I put up a meme the other day on the Nintendo, uh, the NCR uh, Twitter and Instagram, where it was uh, buy, a, um, buy a new Nintendo game in 2011 for $50 or wait and buy it now for 60 mm. And, like, that's our fault that <laughs> that happens. Yeah. Like, you look at yeah. Breath of the Wild was a launch title, and it's still full price. Like, mm. that doesn't happen on any other console. People are still buying it for that price, though. Yeah, they are. I was one of those people. I didn't get a Switch until last year, and that was the first game I bought was Breath of the Wild. <laughs> That's such a good such game. A, oh, it is. I can't wait for the sequel. You're up, Derek. Okay, so this also comes to us from NintendoLife.com, and we mentioned this last week, but the Sonic the Hedgehog 2 official movie trailer has been released. It debuted at the Game Awards, which aired this past thursday now has everyone here watched the trailer yes yes what did you guys think <laughs> Reagan I, hasn't I, watched I, it <laughs> oh you haven't watched no. it okay interesting no. okay <laughs> so we'll we'll start with jason what I'll, I'll save my geeking out for last uh jason what did you think of it uh, I think it's exactly like we think. It, like uh, I had mentioned before, they establish the fact that you know the the put Sonic in in the real world, and we have to accept that. Okay, mm. and we we accept that stupid premise. Like it's dumb on the surface, but it works within the context of that movie. Now that we're okay with that, now they're going to go to the completely bonkers silliness of. You know, Doctor uh, Doctor Eggman and uh, Knuckles and Tails and all that stuff, and we're gonna be on board for it. And I think it's gonna be great, honestly. What about you, Mike? So, I'm gonna I'm gonna preface this by by saying that we were a Nintendo family growing up. I played very little Sega, so I don't have the nostalgia attached to Sonic as um, I know at least one fourth of the people on this panel do. Um. <laughs> It was okay. I haven't seen the first movie, so what? It's okay. You're not alone. You're not alone. You, you both of you guys. Even... When this nope. podcast is over, you should go. This watch podcast the Sonic movie. is over right yeah. now. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> look, look, hear, hear me out. Hear me out. The movie's only an hour and a half. Okay, it's not that long. So, do yourself a favor. Watch the movie. It is yeah. way better than it has any right to yeah. be. Okay, good. That's the only reason I haven't watched the trailer of the second. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna tell you guys right now. It is. Honestly, and I'm not lying, it's one of the best video game movies that there hmm. is. Yeah. Okay. And it has no right to be. On the surface, it's dumb as shit. I mean, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah. But you watch it and you're like, this is a great movie. Like, it's a really <laughs> good movie. Best video game movie, though? I've seen Mario Brothers. Come Dude. On. Well... <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> but that new Mario movie, that's going to be something. Uh, we'll we'll uh, cross that bridge when we get to it. Yeah, yeah. I, I have my concerns about it, but I'm just still going to watch it. Yeah. So I'll admit, and Jason can back me up on this because I texted him and Wally, I flipped out. Like, mm -hmm. I nerded out so hard when I watched this trailer because it wow. had – it had everything that I asked for. As someone who grew up playing the Sonic games, 
I felt like I was watching the games come to life. Wow. Everything from seeing full on, you know, madman Robotnik, seeing Tails flying the plane, the fact that they brought in the same voice actor who's voiced Tails in the games to voice him in the movie. Mm. But the the cherry on top was Knuckles. The way they mm. introduced him from a cinematic standpoint was perfect. Yeah. Mm. The fact that he caught Sonic in midair <laughs> and just slammed him on the ground. It was just it was awesome and I cannot wait for this movie. It's as a little tease for cuz my first top 5 list that I do for my new show is top 5 movies I'm looking forward to in 2022. This is definitely on it. I cannot wait for this movie. It's going to be such a fun ride, especially if you're a Jim Carrey fan. Uh, especially of the the bombastic '90s era Jim Carrey, yep. not the yeah. post uh, 2000s like weird. Um, don't know what drugs he's on, Jim Carrey. Like this is back to him, like just being joyful and crazy. <laughs> like it's it's really refreshing to see him just let loose and be Jim Carrey again. Wow. And you get that in the first movie, too. Mm. And that's one of the highlights of it, was seeing him kind of go back to that Ace Ventura, Dumb and Dumber era, of, you know, what made Jim Carrey untouchable exactly. in the 90s. So mm. I'm, I've watched it. I'm, I won't admit how many times I've watched it because <laughs> it's been a lot. But I'm, I'm really excited for it. It looked really good. Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, I'm definitely going to be there day one. Um, Absolutely. But that's it for the, the news this evening. We're going to go into our roundtable discussion of KOTOR. But first, I want to give shout-outs to our lovely, lovely patrons over at patreon.com slash nerdcaveretro. And Derek, do you want to do the honors of shouting out our patrons? I would love to. We want to shout-out Tyler Watson, Axblade07, Daniel Salmon, Armez Jackson, Hand Solo, Carlos Longoria, a.k.a. Rampage, Rampage. Staff Sergeant Sketch, Brandon Rutledge, a.k.a. the Emerald Coast Fact Checker, <laughs> Gus and Penny, Matthew Salmon. I forgot to mention Tyler Watson is actually the fact checker to the fact yes. checker, Mr. Wally Phelps. <laughs> uh, Matthew Salmon, Joey Image, Ron Johnson, Mixmaster, and one of our wonderful guests tonight, Mr. Mike Eveland. Thank you all so much for your continued contributions. And if you want to be a part of our awesome Patreon community, just head on over to patreon.com slash nerdcaveretro. You get to vote on our monthly commentary tracks. Like this month, we've got a fantastic lineup in our poll between Christmas Vacation, Batman Returns, and Toy Story 2. And I'll be honest, I'll be okay with any of those three. Me too. Sounds great. <laughs> it, so if you haven't made... voted yet, if you're one of our patrons, it's open to all patrons. So... If you haven't voted yet, head over to uh, patreon.com slash retro. And if you want to sign up just to vote, give us a buck to vote. Go do that. <laughs> and you get uh, all kind of cool stuff for the month of December. Absolutely. Don't if trust you... that Mike guy. He sounds sketchy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if you want to be a part of our awesome Patreon community, just head on over to patreon.com slash retro. And tonight we are talking about... Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, or better known as KOTOR, is an RPG video game series based on an earlier comic book series and with a subsequent new comic book series, all based on the fictional universe of Star Wars by George Lucas. Ah, Mr. Lucas. Uh, the first and third video game installments were developed by BioWare, while the second one was done by Obsidian Entertainment. And that I didn't know. I didn't know that uh, the second one was made by Obsidian. I thought uh, BioWare did all of them. Uh, <clears throat> they were published by LucasArts, and the comic series was published by Dark Horse. And on a separate note, uh, Dark Horse is actually going to be doing some Star Wars comics again here pretty soon, which I always nice. love those Dark Horse comics. It's awesome. Um, oh, yeah, especially Dark Empire. Great series. Oh, yeah. And the Boba Fett series. Oh, they were all good. Um, but I first played this game uh, back in when it was released. And what year did this come out? In, uh, 2003. 
2003. Yeah, um, I actually got it for the original Xbox, and I remember uh, I first rented it before I bought it, and um, I bought, rented it at Blockbuster Video. Uh, took it what's home, that? started playing it. Yeah, <laughs> what's, what's block, Blockbuster Kids? Is you back can rent video home. games before streaming. You had to actually go to a place to get yeah. games and movies. Um, but yeah, I rented it for the weekend, and um, I'll be honest. When I first played it, I, I really liked it the way the it was kind of open world. Mm-hmm. I had never played a game like that mm-hmm. before, and um, but the thing that I hated at first was the combat system. Uh, it's a turn-based combat system, and uh, if you've never played this type of game, it's a third person over the shoulder, or actually not third person, but actually behind your character, um, and you traverse the world. It's uh, you talk to people, uh, you get bits of story as you go. It's set up. It's a very early version of uh, Mass Effect. So if you played the Mass Effect series, which is why I. Sp- actually played the mass effect series is because um when mass effect came out and it was i was of course again in uh blockbuster and i saw that bioware had made mass effect i was like huh i like those uh knights of the old republic games so i'm gonna go uh, rent this and that's when i fell in love with the mass effect series because it was a a better version (laughs) at least i thought at the time was a better like combat version Mm. of uh kotor uh, Rampage in chat room. Rampage. Um, Rampage. But yeah, I I grew to love the combat system after a while because, it, like I said, it was new to me at the time. Mm-hmm. And um, it took me a while to kind of get into it. But once you kind of figure it out and, and really get into it, it really does kind of grow on you, that kind of turn-based uh, action. Um, and the story of the game, I, I don't want to really want to... I don't really want to tell the story of the game because there's a lot of spoilers <laughs> in this game. Don't do that. But uh, let's just say at the beginning, you start out the game, you wake up, and you're a dude with amnesia or lady, which uh, you can play as a female character too. Um, you don't know who you. Nobody knows who you are, but apparently there's uh, your ship is being attacked, and your um, your general on the ship is a, a, a Jedi who is. Uh, you know, everybody's like taking, uh, you know, the shuttles off the ship, and then you meet up with this other guy who doesn't know who you are. But you know, you team up and you go through the ship. You get into a, a pod to get off the ship. You go down to the planet, and then you start your adventure together. And throughout the game, you kind of get bits and pieces of who you are, and uh, um, kind of the story unfolds from there. And it's kind of weird playing it now the second time through now that I know the big twist in the story, which I don't think it's kind of hard to figure out. But, you know, it, it's fun to go through the game and kind of, you know, figure it out as you go along. But kind of wanted to get you guys your first impressions of the game. And um, let's start with with Reagan, because I know you're a huge Star Wars fan. And uh, oh, when did you first play the game and what were your thoughts when you when you first played it? Yeah. Uh, so I, I first played it as well when it was released on the original Xbox and it might've been, might've been 2004. I don't know if I got it right away, but, um, I was definitely late middle school, early high school. So sorry if you feel old. Um, (laughs) and, uh, I was, I mean, I was like ripe age for playing that game and just like ripe audience. And, uh, I'll, yeah, I, I think my impression, I loved it. Absolutely, I was blown away by not only the graphics at that time, um, but just the just intricate story. To your point, yeah. it's open world, right? But you but just can, the fact but, that you're in a Star Wars, you're in the Star Wars universe, and it's yes, open world, and you pretty much yeah. can go and do whatever just you go want. and do whatever, right? And I was I was just blown away by that, and also just the story, how intricate it was, right? Yeah. I mean, there was mo- there's moments where you're just walking, you're going from one place to the next, and then it'll stop you and it'll say that, you know, this character looks like they're really, you know, upset about something. Yeah. And you're like, what? And then you talk to them and it's just like exposition happens at random moments that you don't know matter until yeah. later. And it's just, I mean, it was just so, so rich with story. So I was very blown away by that. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll never forget. I, I played it, I played it quite a lot. I played, 
I played different, try to customize my character, different versions of the character. You know, whoever doesn't know, you can play like a soldier, you can play a sentinel, you can play a scout, right? So I'd try all the different versions. Um, it's very you know, much I, like Mass Effect in that way, where you have your dis- different classes that you can yeah. play. Um, your responses, like you were talking about, your responses to people really go towards whether or not you're going to go towards Jedi right. or, you know, light side or, or dark it, side. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought yeah. it blew my mind when, you know, the the further you yeah. get to the light side, like your character starts to stand yeah. a little more powerful, you know. But if you go to the dark side, he starts to hunch over and look all right. crazy. Like, that's awesome. Yeah. Like, never yeah. seen this before. Right. Well, and I've played games, too, that are like RPG games where you have a choice, you know, like, yeah, yeah. you do. But like, ultimately, at the end of the day, it doesn't affect the story, which with this game that's probably the first time I played a game like that where it affected the story long-term. Right. And then it also affected you as a character. You were different. Like you said, your dark light, get different bonuses for dark side, different bonuses for light side. Like that was, that was so cool to me. Like I had to play, I had to play the replay value was huge. You had to play again. You had to try dark side. You had to try trying to stay gray. You had to try, Mm -hmm you know, being nice, but still staying lights, try to be mean, but still be lights. It was, it was, it, it took me in. I can't, I can't tell you how many times I played that game. <clears throat> One of my favorite stories and favorite games of all time. For I'm sure. so glad they didn't wipe it from the, uh, the, you know, the, like how Disney went through and just like, just wiped everything out of Canon. Yeah. L- luckily yeah. this is still <laughs> Canon. So what about Ish. you? Ma- what about you? Yeah, well, yeah, I shouldn't speak too soon. We don't know. Right? Yeah. We don't know. News what article is going to release tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, podcaster Jason Robbins made us think uh, maybe we shouldn't keep this canon. Um, what about you, Mike? Um, what were you? What was your first impression of the game? Uh, this is one of two games that brought me out of the dark ages of Mike wasn't playing video games. Mm. Um, I had a GameCube at the time because of Ocarina of Time. And that, that sort of brought me in, but I was only playing that. And then I was very disappointed with Wind Waker, so I stopped playing again. And then I moved in with this guy who was a horrible person, but he had a PlayStation <laughs> 2 or 3. And he had, he had one of the PlayStations. I think it was a 2, actually. And he had an Xbox. And this is one of the games he had for Xbox. So I, I got to play it when it was fairly new. I didn't get very far that first time around because I'm embarrassed to say there's a scene where you're trying to go into the sewers and you have to put a bomb in a guy's pocket. And I didn't understand that mechanic. Hmm. So I kept trying to fight the beast, just straight up fight him. <laughs> um, and they couldn't figure out why I kept dying. But when I bought a 360, when 360 came out, I immediately got this game and played it again. And I'm, I'm amazed you've only played it twice, Jason, because I've lost track of the different yep. times I've played through this game. I've oh, probably I've... played it <clears throat> once every two years, once a year. Oh, I yeah, played it's one it... of my go-backs. I played it multiple times back on the uh, the original Xbox, but I haven't played it since then. So um, until the re-release mm. just uh, you know a couple of weeks ago, it, it came out for a uh, remaster, and uh, I got it for the Switch. So that's the yes, Wally. I am enjoying playing it on the Switch, and I yeah, know Wally you're wasn't be the only one making fun of you for that. <laughs> well, I'm, I am enjoying <laughs> playing it on the Switch. Um. <laughs> Can't wait to see the Twitter comments tomorrow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, what about you, uh, Derek? Did you ever play this uh, originally on the Xbox? I did. So I was going into my senior year of high school uh, when this game came out, and uh, a friend of mine uh, told me about it. And, of course, you know, with it being Star Wars, I had to get my hands on it because if mm-hmm. it had the Star Wars name, I had to have it. What really drew me into the game – so. I'll be honest, I did not like the combat system at all. Mm. In the beginning, it felt really clunky, mm-hmm. and it was really frustrating, but you get used to it. As you know, we played games back then, we just kind of had to work with what we had. But the thing that drew me in the most, it was the first Star Wars game, I think, really since Shadows of the Empire, that it felt like Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Your Star Wars has a very distinct feel when you're watching the movies that yeah. differentiates itself from any other franchise. I loved the storytelling, as Reagan was saying, the intricate storytelling. You felt like you were in control of what happened. 
with your choices. Like you had options with other games, but this, you say one thing or you do one thing, it completely changes the whole trajectory of the game. You, I remember uh, you, when you're doing your Jedi training and you're going to Dantooine and you have to you know, fight this Jedi that's turned to the dark side, you can choose to try and bring her back to the light, but if you kill her, then any objective that involves her is eliminated from the game. Mm -hmm. mm. Huge. So it, stuff like that had never been done before, you know, to my recollection. And that was just what was amazing to me. And the fact that you could pick three different types of characters, then you could be either light or dark, or you can try and stay in the middle. You know, I played through this game multiple times, just in the sense of I want to try this character and see if I can do these things different and then I'll beat the game again then go back try another one and it, and I've been playing it on the Switch as well it's the first time I've played it in many years and the control system the combat system still took a little getting used to because I was like oh crap not this again but it, it's <laughs> uh, funny enough it's not too uncommon of that play style like it reminds me of an MMO Mm -hmm. is what it really yes. reminds it's me of. It's because you guys are young, so you don't remember the turn-based strategy game. Or you, you might know it, but you didn't grow up with them. Like, Right. But yeah, I've I've enjoyed getting back into that story. Like, we had the we had the Tales of the Jedi comic books, but as far as games go in that specific medium, we didn't have anything that told the story of what happened before mm -hmm. yeah. episode one. So it was a whole new world. And it's, I was doing some research on the game, and BioWare actually had the option to either make an Episode 2 tie-in game or Knights of the Old Republic, a.k.a. a game set thousands of years before Episode 1. And they chose this one because it gave them more creative freedom. And I think yeah. it was absolutely the right decision. Yeah, they yeah. chose wisely. Yes. Yeah, well, and you mentioned the combat, too. I mean, I will say, like, turn-based can be frustrating but i thought it was a unique at its time it made a really good use of the turn-based fighting because yeah. it, it once you once you started the turn right it it was it seemed visually to just kind of play out you know it didn't look like you were like i've played games rpgs jrpgs that literally each character goes and then the next one goes yep. and then the next one goes and it's like you know that doesn't seem realistic because it's not right that's not what fighting looks like everybody just kind of does their thing several this 90s gave the, rpgs are like that yeah this gave the illusion of you know just live fighting but with turn-based mechanics which i thought was i thought was okay um i mean it certainly was clunky but but once you get used to it it's still you kind of forget about it yeah yeah i mean i had played you know before the like turn-based strategy games before this, I just never experienced turn-based in like a, a third-person, you know, type of world like this, mm -hmm. where you expect it to play, like you know, the Jedi Knight games, where you you know you're using the yeah the thumbsticks, the uh, the analog sticks to control oh. you know the lightsaber and stuff. But no, it's like you you go to fight somebody and like everything stops. And you have to, you know, <laughs> yeah. pick what you're gonna do, and it takes a. It took a while to get used to because it was just I wasn't used to that. I wasn't expecting it, but you do get used to it after a yeah. while, and it's a pretty good, especially when you, when it's what you're expecting. Right. You know, it's it's just this is what the game is. You you you're you're okay with it, and you get used to it after a while. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, and one thing that so I I don't know how. I'm sure you guys noticed this, but one thing that I, I did not notice at the time when I was playing it back then, because I, I had never played Dungeons and Dragons as a kid. Okay. Played it as an adult. I totally understand it now. Uh, the, the mechanics and actually the rules of the game and the algorithms are so like almost copy and paste based on Dungeons and Dragons, um, which I thought, I, it's brilliant. Number one, it's funny now looking and like reading and I'm like, literally they like copied the player's handbook is what it reads like. And they just pasted it in a, into star Wars and put some star Wars lingo on it. But to me, I thought that was a brilliant use of, of the game because again, it's that turn-based structure uh, without feeling turn-based and it has rules. It has 
you know, saving throws and difficulty class and, you know, your attack roll. It even says attack roll. And I'm like, you're not rolling anything, but, but I guess the algorithm is like yeah. rolling virtual the, the calculation game is, dice. The game is rolling for you. <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah. So you actually don't really have any control. It's all chance. Um, but you have the illusion of control, which to me makes a brilliant game. It allows the game to guide itself and to guide you through the story and through the play without you actually having really any control. Like you can select the critical strike, but maybe you don't, maybe you miss, maybe you hit. Yeah. I don't know. It depends on what the dice tell you to do. You well, know? It was also too, it was the first game where I had played where you could equip new, you know, get better weapons, mm. you loot bodies, you get better weapons and you have, you know, better stats on, you know, you get a double bladed, uh, you know, double bladed, just regular yeah. blade sword. You know, when you first start out and like, wow, this is a lot better than the you know, little two little junky uh, swords I'm using right now. And then you're like, wow, I just took this dude out in one hit because, you know, the stats are so much better. You start paying attention to things like stats and yeah. like, wow, this thing, this sword might be ugly, but holy crap, it's got like a high chance for crit and things like that. Yeah. And not only that, but um, actually, uh, you know wearing armor and things like that affect mm -hmm. your character as well like mm -hmm. different armors that you can put on you like chest armor and head armor and like arms and legs and hands and it's so granular mm -hmm. and to mm -hmm. be done uh on a, a console was just it was a whole new concept and no, and no wonder you know they went on to make things like mass effect because they took all that that they had learned Mm -hmm. And almost perfected with the Knights of the Old Republic games, and then just took it to uh, the Mass Effect series. And I, and, you know, even playing the Mass Effect series, you know, back then I, I played Mass Effect when it first came out, like what 2007 or eight, somewhere around there. Um, right. And it was only what like four years after Kotor. And you're like, and playing Mass Effect for the first time, I'm like, man, this is almost this feels like I'm playing a, 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 mm. like a KOTOR uh, sequel. Like it feels like the same universe when you, you first step in there. Yeah, to, to Reagan's point, they weren't the first ones to do the D&D &D rules, but they were the right. first one to figure out how to do it without it being frustrating. Right. Because you play like the early Fallout, the the, the pre um, Bethesda, yeah, Bethesda start fallouts. Yeah. Those are D and D rules or or Elder Scrolls in anything right. before oh, yeah. Oblivion. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, you have the hit or miss ratio. So you're sitting there like in, in Morrowind, like doing this with a sword. Yeah. And every single one, <laughs> miss, 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 miss. 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 Yeah. And you want to throw your controller across the screen. <laughs> well, so. and <clears throat> to me, those games like and yes, it's it's true. Almost every game these days is based on D and D rules, right? But it it was they're disguised a little bit, you know. But in Kotor, like you're reading through it, I'm like, this is D and D. Like, what? Is, this is Star Wars D and D. What is this? Like, will hey. save, you know, will power and saving throws and attack rolls and you know, chance to hit. I'm like, what in the world? <laughs> you know, they they knew how to do it and cherry pick the good stuff <laughs> without making yeah. it maddening. Yeah, right. And the, one of the coolest things about the game is, like, like you were saying, Derek, they they didn't set it in, you know, the the current. The, the quote current Star Wars timeline, <clears throat> it was set in the old Republic, you know, 2000 years before the events of the Star Wars movies that we knew. And it's so cool to go into that world. And so many things are the same. So it kind of gives you the, the, it kind of lets you know how old the Star Wars universe really is to know that it's been around for thousands and thousands of years and not a lot has changed in the 2000 years from then to the, the, you know, the events of, you know, star Wars and empire strikes back, but you go into that world and it's star Wars. It's just star Wars. Like you're in the star Wars universe playing your own character. And it, there, it, it, it like you were saying, Mike, like it, they, you know, they've made the old Republic MMO. Like it felt like you were playing an MMO at the time on a console, and I just, I'll never forget the feeling of playing this game because you know we'd played 
plenty of Star Wars games before this. I mean, you had you had Star Wars games going all the way back to the Atari Twenty Six Hundred, but nothing like this, where it was a living, breathing world, and the choices that you made affected everything moving forward. Uh, actually affected, because you know, I I love Fable and I love the early Fable games, and you make choices, and it makes certain things different but it doesn't change the game this one it yeah. absolutely you know it to derek's point it, you lose a companion if you go dark side you're not gonna have that companion sorry yeah well, you know spoiler alert the final final ending to the story changes a little bit yeah it's yeah. been like 20 years i'm not sure spoiler alert. no i know i know whatever <laughs> but i'm just you know whatever uh <clears throat> well and i thought to that same point male versus female changes changes interactions like really changes yep. and changes sort of the story direction uh because there's certain pieces you you can't accomplish if if you pick the a certain gender right and so yeah i mean i I've, i had forgotten that so when i started playing again today i was like god ah, it's been a long time since i played a female character on this game let me do that just just because and uh like 15 20 minutes into the game i'm like well wait that was different you know or they they i mean they, they still accomplish some of the same stuff but it's a guy do you know in uh, npc versus a, a female npc that you interact with and the story hits just a little bit differently which is super cool it's something bioware does very well uh, you know through mass effect through dragon age and mm -hmm. they they do that very well yeah yeah for sure yeah bioware is one of those companies that you know they kind of <clears throat> took a lot of heat by the time they got to uh, Mass Effect 3. Um, but I I actually really liked the ending of Mass Effect 3. Um, so what would you guys think if Bioware just completely did a whole remake of the original KOTOR? Not just a remaster, but do you think that it would be worth their while to go back and completely rebuild this game from the ground up? I would love to play this game on a modern console that like, like, like um, Reagan, you talked about, you know, why would I play it this when I have the regular Xbox load times? That's why you should yeah, play it on no, the you're Xbox. Right. Yeah. One. No, you're right. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah. And I remember I was sitting there and I was like, Oh, that was quick. Uh, so no, you're a good point. But yeah, to play it on a modern console where you have the same feel of the game, but you know, Christopher grass graphics, because we're better than we were 20 years ago. Oh, I would take my money now. Yeah. It would be a day one purchase for me. Easy. Yeah. Well, so maybe correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought that's what they're doing, aren't they? Uh, except it's not Bioware. Um, Aspire yeah, Media is I, coming back to do well, that's the PlayStation what, uh, and PC, right? I, I forgot about that actually. They are doing yeah. a complete remake of the game, but Bioware's not doing it. Yeah, Bioware's not doing it. Right. No, yeah, that scares me. <clears throat> yeah. Well, yeah, it does. And I, I'll say this. I mean, look, and I, I think I've said this about Star Wars before so it's always going to apply right the just because they make something new doesn't mean the old thing doesn't exist and i yeah. can't enjoy it right and so absolutely like i was again playing today and <clears throat> looking at being on uh taurus yeah and it, i'm like man this is gonna be beautiful having played games like spider-man on playstation and just how if you stand still how realistic it looks like i mean you can go up on top of a building of spider-man and you're looking out at the new york you know cityscape and it's it's real right mm -hmm. i'm thinking man with star wars and with star wars worlds and just the, just intricate beautiful worlds that are created there how cool is this going to look on a, on a fully built from the ground version of this game right yeah. but at the same time it's like you know it, the the thing that's so beautiful about the original is is what they accomplished with what they had and there's some of that nostalgia right yeah. Like it's not going to, you remake it. It's not going to be the same thing. Um, even though they're getting some of the same voice actors, it's just not going to be the same thing, but that's okay. Cause the original thing exists. I can still go th plug it into my Xbox or my Xbox one and I can, I can play that thing. So there's, there's be... always the danger of the George Lucas effect too, where yeah. you have a beautiful story and they're like, Oh, but we have technology now. So let me go back and twiddle and do yeah. this and that. Yeah. Or, or no. cold cultures no. <laughs> yeah cult cultures changed a little bit let's change this dialogue a little here and it's like well i was about to say surely you wouldn't be talking about the the jaded fan base of the movies right <laughs> no. no i think i think it's been well established on all three of our shows the horrible yeah. horrible nature that our fellow star wars yeah. fans are yeah, <laughs> yeah. well to your point regan uh, you know 
I think the the way they should do it is look at the Resident Evil 2 remake. They took basically the bones of the originals mm-hmm. and some of the the main like you, you know the 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 police station, like that main area of the police station. They they took the bones yeah. of what was there originally and then they just you know modernized it and made it better and made a it made you feel like you did the first time you played mm-hmm. Resident Evil 2 but if you go back and play the original original Resident Evil 2 now it's rough to look at and play <laughs> really yeah. it's yeah. bad and then you play the new one it's like it's a whole new experience and yeah. that's what I really want from it I don't want the same experience I had then because I know I'll never have that again right you know right. To, you'll eat, because I already know the twist in the story. I already know how the story goes, but give me a new telling of that story mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. A, you know a new environment and a new you know uh, uh, like give me the same thing but just different yeah. <laughs> if that makes yeah. any sense. No, you're right. Oh, and to to your point, I think my, both my fear and what I think is exciting is that Disney's going to do their version of the story. They're yeah. going to take the story. They're going to do their version of it. And it's going to be pretty close, but they're going to make it fit exactly how they want it to within whatever else they have going on. Which Instead whenever of just they tra- do that show, I need to know when they're going to do auditions for Darth Malik because I want to throw my hat in the ring. <laughs> hey, yeah, 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 yeah. You can do it. Yeah. As you should. Yeah. Yeah. But I think, you know, it'll it'll be good. It'll be enjoyable. It's going to be different. I think if we go into it yeah. knowing that, that's that's going to be okay. Hey, if they can fix Bioware's dark side or Renegade for Mass Effect just being D-bag choices instead of like evilness, <laughs> I'd be okay with that because Bioware always makes playing dark side just your yeah. twerk me. Yeah. 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 Does anybody else feel bad whenever they try to do uh, you know any kind of Bioware game, whether it's Mass Effect or Kotor? Do you always feel bad when you try to do a Renegade playthrough or a Dark Side playthrough? Like I feel bad being a dick. Just to I, even, I don't feel to, bad with the overall evil, but the individual things to get those yeah. points, and you're just being you're not being evil. You're being like you're being a dick. You're just yeah yeah yeah. Well, it, no, and that's funny. I, so again, today when I started, I was like, I'll, just, I'll play Dark Side. I haven't, I haven't really tried Dark Side in a long time. And there was a couple times where I made choices like not thinking because that's what, I, like, what I would do. That was mm-hmm. the good thing. And then it was like at the end, it was like boom, light side points gained. It's like, no, shoot, that's not what I'm trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I had to really try. Uh, it's to, the worst when you're side. trying to get to polarize the one side. <laughs> yeah. You're like, no. <laughs> yeah, but um, but it, funny story there that I'll tell. Like, I I usually don't. No, no. I, to me, it's a game. Like it's a whole separate thing. Like it's not, I can, and maybe this says something about me, but like I can separate it from myself mm-hmm. and just be like, this is what you're supposed to do to get this, this encounter. Or like, if I ever play like in the, um, elder school games, I'll play the thief or the rogues. So like, yeah, you got to steal from everybody. Right. But it's funny. Like, I don't have a problem doing that in a game. And maybe that speaks to my inner dark side. I don't know. Uh, but my brother growing up, he's so funny and he's never going to listen to this. So I'll tell it <laughs> like he will, we would play together. We only had one console. So it'd be his turn. He'd play his character for an hour. And then it'd be my turn. And I'd play my character for an hour. And he, I would go around and loot everything. I'd go and break every door down, go like just steal from every single room. Cause that's what it's there for. That's what they put it in the game for. Right. But he would refuse to take anything out of chests that were not given to him. And he would struggle through the game. And I'm like, dude, get the med pack and thing, man. Get the get the credits. And he's like, no, it's stealing. You can't do that. And I'm like, and I'm trying to do light side. I'm like, but it's not going to give you dark side points. Just get the loot out of the crate. You know, you're going <laughs> to have an easier time. He's like, I'm stealing. I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> like, yeah. the light side points aren't going to be worth anything if you're dead. <laughs> right. Like, if you, can't, if you can't buy any equipment and heal, like, what's the point of this game? Yeah, because sometimes you'll run into an apartment and there'll be like a, a family yeah. in there and they're Ooh, like, please don't, don't hurt us. And yeah. I'm like, ah, I'm just going to go loot all your stuff, your stuff and yeah. get out of here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He, he would refuse to do that. He couldn't do it. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and what is the, I can never remember the name. It's not Sabak, but there's a card game that you play in the game. What is the uh, name of it? Oh, Pazak. Pazak. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. 
I spent like two hours playing Pazak a couple of weeks ago in yeah. that game because it's so freaking fun. Yeah. I mean, all it really is is blackjack, but yeah. I just yeah. kept winning, and then I would lose and be like, ah, well, I got to win another set. And just, next thing you know, it's like two hours later, and I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is good. You just explained the premise of all casinos. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Yeah. That's why I don't go to casinos, because I'll get stuck. <laughs> oh, that's Did you right, because ever... you're in Biloxi. Yeah. yeah, I I would cheat though in Pazak, not not in not in a casino, uh, and just save, and then if I lost, just load, and then just play again. Oh mm. yeah, that's, that's, that's the beauty of RPG yeah. gaming. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> little hacks like that. that make a big difference. Yeah, before you try something new, you're like, let me save this in case it doesn't turn yeah. out well. Yeah, yeah, I, and it's very much like like I said, it's very much like a uh, like the Mass Effect games where you go through the game and you you pick up companions along the mm -hmm. way um and you go to different planets and things like some of the planets you heard about in the movies but didn't get to see like dantooine yes. like korriban yeah, korriban yeah. i love korriban yep. with all the, yeah. the lore and stuff about the the sip oh yeah mm -hmm. talk about story that was huge like that was huge that they dug into that stuff and set all that up um i'm gonna take a total sidetrack here and ask everybody this question favorite favorite party favorite arrangement of party you could only have two companions at a time who would you go who would your go-to party um i'm trying to remember mm. everybody's names <laughs> yeah. yeah i asked the question too and then i just thought to myself i don't think i remember, yeah, I don't remember names. the names but if i'm playing dark then what's his name hk the droid yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i was gonna he's a must if you're dark he's a yeah. must with the meat bags Agreed. i always take <laughs> yeah. the uh the uh he's not an r2 Query. unit but he's a uh a, a, R2 type droid. What's his yeah. name? Uh, M something, right? Yeah. I he always carries take... through to the second one, too. He, he's good early game, but I, I I never use him much after. Yeah, I pretty much use him through the whole game. Always take him with me places. Yeah, I um, I always tried to keep Bastila in the party because of the story, obviously. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it's pretty um, important. When you finally got to Joe Lee, the, um, the old hermit, on um on uh the the wookie planet he was he was always fun to play with he's yeah. good if you're light side yeah 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 let's see i'm trying to look up some of the uh some of the environments that were in the game you had dantooine you had corban um where was it i just dantooine was cool to see just after hearing about it in the original movie yeah yep Yep. Um, well, and it was, I mean, musically too. It was just so peaceful. Just yeah. It had the best, mu yeah, uh, best music. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah. Korriban, which was locations for the Jedi Academy and the Sith Academy. Um, let's see. Uh, War Ravaged Telos and uh, its or orbiting Citadel station. Uh, we have a crossover mm -hmm. there with the uh, Mass Effect, the Citadel. Um, yeah. uh, the Ebon Hawk, which is a uh, ship. The ship, yep, ship and um yeah what was the uh, water planet we haven't mentioned the water planet manon uh, manon, manon yes the where to be a good guy you had to try harder yeah because <laughs> yeah what are those those puzzles call where you move the stuff back and forth like no that wasn't it it was some weird thing with pressure but to be yeah. good you had to like try really hard and figure it out to be dark side you're just like press the button ah. kill it doesn't matter yeah yeah <laughs> But yeah, I, that that was probably when I first went through the game was probably my favorite thing about the game was getting to go to all the different environments that mm -hmm. you either heard about or were talked about in the you know in the the extended universe novels and things like that because you know after the episode three dropped it was like we're probably never gonna get any more Star Wars after this. Um, you know, because Lucas was just like, you know, I'm, I'm tired of all the fanboys yelling at me. I'm done. <laughs> it's just like we're never getting any more Star Wars. So the only way you're going to see these places was through yeah. in video game form. Well, I think one of the biggest legacies of this game is that it introduced that era of Star Wars to a completely mm -hmm. different audience. As I mentioned earlier, we had the comic books. So, you know, we as big Star Wars fans knew that that aspect of the universe was there. And it also it really introduced that there is Star Wars beyond the Skywalker story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And not, that's where not, all the good stories lie. I mean, don't get me wrong. Yeah. I love the Skywalker saga, but yeah. all the best Star Wars we've gotten is stuff that happens just in the Star Wars universe. Yeah, it's, it's such yeah. a big universe and so much happens. There's so much more than just this little, little tiny pocket that they've been telling for yeah. 45 I, years. I just went back. Actually, that was something I did this week, too. I, I went back and I started watching Rebels again from the beginning. Mm-hmm. That's such a good show. Rebels yeah, mm-hmm. is so good. Like, yep. I was not a fan of Attack of the Clone or the Attack of the Clone, the Clone Wars, though they did redeem themselves with the, the new, the new last mm-hmm. season. Yeah, in my eyes, but Rebels from the get go was good. Uh, no, actually, <laughs> when I, I hear some disagreement. Here. No, I two had two I had or three the, episodes in, it gets good. Actually, I had the rough. same opinion because I had only watched through it once, and I was like, man, those first couple episodes were a little weak. Um, mm-hmm. But actually going back and watching them again, I gained a new appreciation for it. I was like, yeah. man, this actually starts off really strong. Yeah. I, yeah. And I think it the does. problem was is it – I think it was mostly the um, animation style. took mm-hmm. me a while to really appreciate it. And now that I'm kind of used to the way that show looks, I can go back to the beginning now and be like, okay, I feel – way more in this universe now and to start off yeah. where they did is because it kind of starts off with a bang you know mm. that that show does and uh i think i think you should go back and give it another watch mike i think you'll give those first few episodes uh uh watch well, no, i said i liked i said no, i liked it, it from me. the beginning it, it was, was no, i was not the dissenting Reagan. voice <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. i think yeah. you should go back and, and watch it again from the beginning yeah. watch it with a, a new perspective from the yeah. It does a much better job of getting you invested in the characters than Clone yes. Wars did. Yes, agreed. That's a yeah. good point. That's a good point. It does start, and I I've, I have watched it twice. I wa- I watched it first, and then my wife had never seen it. I was like, oh, you gotta watch this. So, um, yeah, it it does definitely start off stronger, and it, I, I think just not to get off on this, but I think that both Clone Wars and Rebels start obviously pitching to kids, like it's a kids show. Yeah. And then like somewhere in the second season, they're like, oh all the parents are the ones really yeah. watching this show. <laughs> and so then they, they start writing and gearing everything towards that older audience. And so it kind of kicks up a little bit. That, you know, it's, I'm that not saying it's fits. bad. It's just, no, that, that fits because the thing that saved clone wars for me was the last season when it ties it into episode three. Mm-hmm. And man, that's brutal. When you see, um, Ahsoka and, um, I'm blanking on the clone Anakin? trooper's name. Uh, Rex? No, 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 no. Um, Captain Rex? something. Anyway, oh, um, when yeah, they're like the only survivor from that ship and they're like burying everyone, yeah. dude, that was like, oh, that's brutal. Yeah. I think Disney is is finally starting to figure out that, you know, I'm ready for some Old Republic stuff, but within the Skywalker saga timeline, the part that we're most interested in is what happens after Jedi and before episode I- seven. It was, mm-hmm. it was, until, yeah, it, it's, it's just like, you know, what Clone Wars addressed before is now, now that's the thing is like, okay, what got us here? And yeah, because when, yeah. when episode seven, not episode seven, I'm losing track of my numbers. No, seven. Yeah. When episode seven came out, I had to Google what they thought the backstory was. Cause I'm like, why are we doing rebellions when we have the, the new empire? I mean, the new empire, the new Republic. Mm-hmm. And I had to like Google the backstory that they didn't tell you in the movie. So I'm like, okay, I get it. Yeah. The yeah, government like, doesn't care. We've got, you know, we've got the Mandalorian, we got the Book of Boba Fett, and you know, Rebels took place in between Episode three and four. So mm-hmm. it's those in between stories, yeah. that those in between that have the most interesting stories. Yeah. That's what made so, Force Unleashed so good, is it told you that story of the rebellion. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So as long as we stay in those areas, I think we'll be okay for a while. Because I'm okay with not having star wars movies for a while as long as you're telling yeah. me the stories that i want to hear like kenobi yeah, yeah. i was about to bring that up i'm so in for great. that already because i just yeah. want to know what he went through during that how, time how did he age like 40 years well, <laughs> he didn't have a lot of moisture twin sons are brutal man. <laughs> twin sons i get it i get it i get it, I get it. <laughs> Not a whole lot of cocoa butter on uh, yeah, yeah. Tatooine. <laughs> yeah. I'm okay with a couple little cameos like they did, with, and I won't describe how Luke was in with Mandalorian because that's recent enough. It would definitely be a spoiler, but yeah, I, I love the fear he installed in 
Imperial guys. Oh yeah. I still I still remember watching that for the first time. I watched it early in the morning before work and it took me everything to not <laughs> scream and wake oh, up my God. girlfriend in the oh, next room. No, I did. I watched it twice. I rewound it and played it again. Then I rewound it, paused it, and I grabbed my wife from the other room and I'm like, watch watch this, watch this. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. But I, I think love it. honestly, I, I think Star Wars stories are just better told in long form format, like a television. One hundred percent agree. Yep. Yep. I mean, you can yeah, give but, us the big, you know, the big spectacle movies, and they don't have to be trilogies. I mean, just give me a Rogue One or, <laughs> you know, whatever every once in a while, and I'll be okay with that. Yeah. Yeah. But That's to your Rogue point, Squadron they leave a lot movie. on the table as far as story. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and even back, you know, to the video games. I mean, those are things that you can you can slam, you know, 24 hours of play, 30 hours of play. Um, or more and you can and again kotor is testament to that it's open world quote unquote you know you can play around and do a bunch of stuff that doesn't progress the story but then they also worked in you know your character the other companions having their stories and backstories to tell and all of these sort of ancillary things that contribute to the overall lore that are happening while you're exploring and not furthering the main story yeah. um, and, and you can have all of this stuff fleshed out and it, it, it's not an hour and a half, you know, or two right. hours, three hours. It's, it's 20, 30 plus hours of content. Um, and, you know, that's to this day is heralded as one of the best Star Wars, if not the best Star Wars story that we have right now. Yeah. Um, and it's not done. Not just in Star Wars, two, too. It, it pretty much gave birth to what we call RPGs now, like the modern day RPG yeah. gaming. Yeah. yeah, and you it's could give me, if they do, you know, a de uh, you know, they are doing the remake, but. You give me a uh, Witcher Three style uh, game where there's just so much side content you can do, mm -hmm. dude. I still have not finished Witcher Three. <laughs> I love it. I pick it up from time to time. I, I I'm probably maybe halfway through the story, maybe. I mean, it's right. Skyrim is still around for ten years and been put yeah. on, Anniversary been released edition. eight times because yeah. it's the it's the side quests. That are yeah. that drive us as humans because you have, I mean, everybody likes the main story, but it, man, it's those little side quests that are the most interesting. Mm. That I shared one of those memes, the Brooklyn Nine Nine memes, where it's like, you know, you're a fan, name five things, and it, they did Skyrim. Like, oh, you're yeah. a fan of Bethesda, name five of their games, and his response was Skyrim. Oh, okay, I made that too easy. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we need to start winding this thing down, and uh, we'll start with you. Um, we'll start with Reagan. And uh, any final thoughts on on Kotor that you'd like to throw out there? Um, yeah, I mean, so uh, two two quick things. So one, uh, we mentioned it earlier, but the music the music to me stands next to George Lucas and the the music of Star Wars. I think that game would probably f have not flopped, but would not have been as strong for me if the music was not there. I think that's true of any Star Wars property. The music is so important to 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 that uh, content, to that story. So bravo for them, you know, really pulling it off. Um, that's music I can listen to to this day over and over and over again. Uh, but then also, like, I don't know why, and I was thinking about this morning, I will never forget there was a day where I – it must have been in the middle of the summer or a winter break or something where I – and it's so vivid, me playing this game in my room with my – giant tv giant it was small but it was big you know that's how tvs were back then mm -hmm. um and and like i'm sitting i had a bunk bed in my room don't know why but i did it's like a metal bunk bed i did too i'm sitting on the <laughs> bottom sitting on the bottom bunk and i played this game it must have been 26 28 hours like i did not stop mm -hmm. i ate in my room i played you know that's what we did as kids uh, my mom checked on me I was like i'm good i mean my eyes are glazing over and i'm like i'm about i'm at the toward the end of the game and I've got to finish it. Like, did not come out of my room for at least 30 hours. I'll never forget that. And I've done that with games before, but that particular one s just sticks. Every time I pick up that game, every time I think of KOTOR, I go back to sitting on my bunk bed in that moment. And I can remember the part of the game I was at um, where I was starting to, like, try not to fall asleep. Um, so it's, it's, it's made a huge impact on my life. Star Wars as a whole has made a huge impact on my life, but that game um, just sticks out all the time when it comes to Star Wars. What about you, Mike? Any uh, final thoughts on KOTOR? I'm going to borrow a little bit from what Reagan said, because the first time I beat it, I wasn't a kid, unfortunately. I was Me and you were a little older. Yeah. But I took vacation at my job, 
and the two games that I played the whole seven days was Oblivion and Knights of the Old Republic because at the time it was the only games I owned for 360. <laughs> and awesome. I did I I did the same thing except I didn't have a mom to make sure that I was like leaving. Yeah. I was just I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. I'm gonna sleep for an hour, then I'm gonna go do this again. Yeah. Um, no, it's my one of my first love in the second generation of gaming. Mm-hmm. And actually, I I love um, Ocarina of Time, but I don't replay it. Mm-hmm. I still replay this. Uh, you know, I've got the I've got the Xbox disc. I've got it on Xbox One to digitally download. I've got the PC version. <laughs> I mean, you have it on your iPhone, and uh, I've also got it on my Android I have TV. it on my iPad. I do. I have <laughs> yeah. it on my iPad. Android TV too. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> so. So, it Luke, so Bioware and LucasArts has made quite a bit of money off of just you, Mike. On one game. <laughs> <laughs> on one game. Uh, to be fair, the, the Xbox One is a Game Pass one, so ah, yeah. I didn't actually purchase the digital version of that. But I have bought the disc multiple times because I made the mistake of selling it once to GameStop for $2, and then I was like, no, but yeah. I want it back. I did the same thing. Uh, they'll do that to you. Yeah. What about you, Derek? Your, what are your final thoughts? So I think KOTOR is really one of the most important games of our generation for a lot of reasons that we were talking about. As Star Wars fans, it introduced us to a new element of the story that we may not have been as aware of if we didn't read comic books or weren't as in tune with the extended universe. From a video game itself standpoint, and Mike touched on this, I think it really defined the next generation of RPGs because the RPGs from the 90s that I've talked about numerous times on the show they were long gone by this point so it in a way reinvented a genre of games so i i think it's one of the most important games of that generation yeah i I'm, I'm going to have to agree it's probably one of the most important games in the RPG uh, genre moving forward. Uh, it, without it, we wouldn't have had Mass Effect, which then led to games, you know, like Dragon Age and uh, you know games like even games like Skyrim and Witch, The Witcher and things like that. Like you can all, you know, like uh, the the tendrils of that genre go back to this game. And if even if you're just a, a passing Star Wars, casual Star Wars fan. I think you'll find something to love about this game. So if you're out there and you've never played this, you never got a chance to play it on the original Xbox or PC, you know, you can go get it on Steam. Uh, you can get it uh, right now. You know, they have the remaster version pretty much everywhere. You can get it on everything. And um, just give it a try. I think you'll find that um, it's definitely one of those games that just sort of even though the, the you know the graphics are a bit dated at this point, it still kind of just draw, has a way of just drawing you in um, immediately. Just with that whole "Who am I?" and w- "What do we? What are we doing here?" and you, you know your your character doesn't know. Just you know you're just dropped into this Star Wars world, and you got to figure all this stuff out little by little. And it just that's the perfect way to draw you into this type of game. Mm-hmm. Story trumps graphics 10 out of 10 times. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Um, let's go ahead and, um, Reagan, where can everybody find you on the interwebs? Uh, Apple, Spotify, Google, anywhere you can get your podcast. Uh, also, fantasticpeoplepod.com. Yeah, Fantastic People Podcast is an excellent podcast, and I like <laughs> to listen to it because it's a very relaxing podcast. You guys have a way of, it's almost like an, an, an NPR uh, show oh, where it's like you. it's very pleasant to listen to and it's very well edited. I love it. So go go check it out. It's pretty much a listen to it wherever fine podcasts are given away for free. And yeah. uh, Mr. Evelyn, Mr. B Res Coffee himself, uh, which you can you go over to brezcoffee.com and use our code NCR for 10% off. Um, wh- where can everybody find you on the interwebs? Making that coffee that you just told them to buy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no. Um, so charity stream stuff, Twitch, Jester8082. Um, for the podcast, you can follow us on Twitter and Facebook, The Jester's Court. Um, also, for all those all those podcasts mentioned by Reagan, you can also find us, The Jester's Court, and Patreon slash, Patreon.com slash The Jester's Court. 
if you want to help us keep the lights on. Awesome. Well, what about you, Derek? I know you got a, uh, you've got you been a busy boy, and you've got like 400 interviews in the can for a feature press pod. <laughs> uh, maybe like 398 is yeah, what it feels like. But, but no, um, I actually I got to do two really cool interviews this week if you're a Cobra Kai fan. I got to chat with uh, Gianni DiCenzo, who plays Dimitri, uh, one of the new characters that's introduced in season one. And I also recently spoke with Jesse Cove, who plays uh, the bully who bullies young Kreese in season three in the diner and is also the real life son of Martin Cove, a.k.a. John Kreese. Hmm. So getting to chat with him was really fun. Um, I'm going to be doing a uh, kind of a Cobra Kai centric episode of my new show in january but as i've been saying the new show launches january 5th you can follow it on facebook twitter instagram at feature press pod uh, the shows will be available on youtube anywhere you get your podcast and i can go ahead and announce this reagan and his co-host from fantastic people christian jones will be joining me for the first episode and we'll be listing our top five movies we're looking forward to in 2022. So Fantastic. Going to have a jam-packed premiere on January 5th. Awesome. Looking forward to it. And uh, I actually had a friend of mine the other day um, was teasing me over Facebook Messenger because he actually got a screener of the new Cobra Kai season. And he kept texting me as he was watching it. Um, I say, you know, uh, trying not to spoil it. And I'm like, dude, don't, 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 don't tell me anything. <laughs> I was like, oh, I can't yeah. wait for that to come out. That show, so, that show is better than it deserves to be, too. It really does. It's, it's undeserved, yeah. but it is so good. It's so good. Yeah, Reagan, it really I don't is. think Reagan's seen it. Have you seen it, the Cobra Kai? I haven't. <sighs> I, I, I want to. It's on my list. I just, there's a lot of other things we've it's, been doing. It's yeah, great. It's so good. And they they go by fast too. There's only like what like yeah. 8 episodes per season and they're, yeah, only they're like, all like 30 minutes each. Yeah. So oh, you okay. you can burn through them really quick. Burn that in a couple days, yeah. Oh yeah. And uh as far as I go, uh just go follow me at jfunktastic pretty much everywhere and you can find all my other stuff like the Open Micers podcast uh over there at Open Micers and uh just follow me everywhere. Twitch Twitter, Instagram, I don't really like Facebook all that much, so uh, go follow. I'm, uh, I'm more active on over at the Twitters, so go follow me there. And uh, let me go ahead and play our music here. And if you would like to, why is it not playing? What are you doing to me, soundboard? This soundboard? Okay. Mike, I know you. T I told you to get the soundboard. I was going to say, it's just the one you just recommended that I get. <laughs> it's been working perfectly up until last week, and I don't know what's. I don't know if I need to update it or what, but you're killing me, Apple. You're killing me. All right, there we go. If you'd like to email us, you can email us at nerdcaveretro at gmail.com. We're at Facebook at facebook.com slash nerdcaveretro. On Instagram and Twitter at nerdcaveretro. And individually at jfantastic and at Derek underscore diamond. Go buy some shirts. Go buy some Christmas stuff over at ncrmerch.com. We got all kind of t-shirts and masks and bags and wall art stuff everything you could possibly want at ncrmerch.com and we're at patreon at patreon.com slash retro where as little as a dollar a month you get to have an extra episode of us commentating all kind of movies and tv shows and it's it's worth it just go throw us a buck and if you can't do that i understand times are tough leave us a review wherever podcasts are given away for free so Derek, please tell them what it's all about May the force be with you. Yeah. Oh, a fellow chucker, eh? I didn't think to capture a, a Star Wars quote for the very end of the show there. I should have done that. <laughs> I was trying to think of any quote that I could use, but I was just going through all of them in my head. It's like, I'll just keep it simple. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, but wave to everybody on Twitch. Thanks, you guys. Thanks, Rampage. Thanks, you guys, for watching. And uh, we'll be back next Wednesday.